guess you would call me a river rat because we, before the dam came in, we were all over the river. Uh, I've had a, a boat since I was uh, 15 years old, and my first boat I remember very well. Uh, my, I had a three and a half horse wizard outboard motor. I used one, and she, we sure did have to pull a lot to make it start and run, but it, it worked great. And another interesting thing for those times, uh, one boy in Carthage ordered from Montgomery Ward a three-quarters, three-quarters of one horse wizard, I mean, uh, no, whatever the Montgomery Ward brand was, Waterwitz, that was the name of it. And in the current, the, the motor could only just meet the current. He'd have to get out of the current of the river to be able to go up the river. <laughs> but it was a good time and things were not rushing then like they do now. You didn't have to have a big motor. Now. We used to hunt on the river uh, in my earlier years. Uh, duck hunting was my passion. And we would camouflage a boat, put it in the river upstream and float down in the current and jump shoot as we went as the ducks came out from the bank along the river. And that was a fun thing to do. When the dam came in, of course it uh, killed the current and we had to figure out a new way to duck hunt and we tr tried that too. Didn't do as well as we did when <laughs> they used they used to grow corn up and down the river in the river bottoms and the ducks like that. And we liked to hunt them there. The first thing I, I got to thinking, the first thing I can remember is there was a lot of rumor about the dam, whether it was going to be built and this, that, and the other. And the, there was a question about whether there'd be a lock. As I remember, the dam was first conceived as just a dam in the river with no lock. And uh, I was chairman of the, of the Smith County Industrial Development Committee and we made an all-out effort to get a lock included. It didn't seem right to, to stop up a river that had been navigable in uh, previous days. Uh, um, my uh, father and grandfather always talked about the old riverboat days when the steamboats went up and down the river. And the people in Jackson, and they live in Jackson County, the people in Gainesboro area, uh, they came out flatly that if it doesn't have a lock, we don't want the lake. So they uh, worked that out, and uh, so now we have the uh, dam making electricity and, and the ability to go on further upstream. We really had two dedications. <coughs> the, the first one uh, was the starting of the dam. And <coughs> Excuse me, I can't. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the county arranged to have a flatbed truck up on the hill where the road is overlooking Horseshoe Bend area. And <coughs> some speeches were made. At that very same time, President Kennedy uh, was in Nashville uh, with a speech at Vanderbilt Stadium. And President Kennedy pushed a button in Vanderbilt Stadium which set off a blast here across the river and which was the start of the construction of the dam. And uh, from that then, of course, the dam construction was a major uh, undertaking and a lot of people found good jobs and, pe and they moved in a lot of people to, uh, to skilled people to work on the dam. And one thing that I remember in the, I saw the first pour of concrete on the dam and the, the rocks were huge, it seemed to me. They were quite large. That's what was going to be, my next story was about Dolly being here. Uh, for that day, the final, this was after the construction, the dedication. Uh, the Corps brought a barge 
up to Carthage and parked it there on the river and invited people to get on the barge and they had a, a towboat, of course, towed it up, towed the barge with uh, people in it up and I guess we went in the lock and uh, they raised us up and everybody got out and went to the dedication, they had dignitaries, politicians here and Dolly Parton was the entertainment and it was in her early years. I'd never heard of Dolly Parton at the time, and, and uh, but she set off the entertainment for the uh, grand opening of the, of the dam. Uh, the next thing I remember is that they told us about the lock and the things that were going on. Oh, it'd been three or four weeks. I one Sunday, uh, sunshiny Sunday afternoon, I said to my children, uh, "Why don't we get in the boat, or launch the boat? It was in my garage. Launch the boat and drive up to the dam to see what it looks like now that it's all finished." Well, that suited me, and I had three children in there. They were teenagers. So we got in the boat, and we came up here, and we pulled up uh, below the lock, and there was rope there with the sign pull for entry, so we pulled the rope. The lock master came out and talked down to us. He said, you want to come through the lock? And we said, why, well, can we? Oh, yeah. So he opened up the lock and let us take our little 15 foot outboard uh, runabout into the lock chamber. We hooked to it and they raised us up. And he said, I'm so glad to see you because you're the first non-Corps of Engineer boat to go through this lock. So, uh, so we, we then just oh, went on into the lake, made a circle or two, came back, he let us down and away we went. So we were, the, according to him, the first non-core uh, boat to go through the lock. A little 15-foot runabout. So uh, you know, we felt very fortunate to have that. And so since then, we've been in and out of the lake and in and out of below the dam. And uh, it's been a, uh, for somebody that's been a, uh, around water all their life, it's it's been a wonderful thing to have it near to us. I would say it's probably uh, overall favorable. However, we all knew people who were displaced because they had to move even though the water didn't get their house. They were within the setback line, which as I recall is 300 feet on either side of the water. And uh, that displaced uh, quite a lot of people that uh, were just real fine folks. But generally, everybody enjoyed the employment opportunity. And uh, of course, employment helped all the business folks in town, and we were very pleased to have that expenditure here. The tobacco warehouses are scattered, were, were scattered all over town. There were seven or eight of them. And uh, uh, they were used uh, for tobacco sales up until uh, tobacco lost its flavor and everything went down. But I don't think the river, I don't recall the river having anything to do with the tobacco sales. One of the interesting things that when Cordell Hull, of course this is named for Cordell Hull, when Cordell Hull was in Washington, he came back in those days when he was a senator, uh, Congress didn't hold session all year. And so they all came home. <laughs> and, uh, Cordell Hull had a, a standing uh, reservation at the Chapman House Hotel, which is where our post office is now, and he and Ms. Hull stayed there every summer for the whole summer. Uh, I never knew Judge Hull, but he, he was well known in town and, well th uh, of course, well thought of, such a fine gentleman. The construction phase just was such a boost to the economy. Uh, the construction part, it was, we just had most anybody who was able-bodied that wanted a job to get a job, because they, they employed a lot of people. The, the Horseshoe Bend section was a 
very prominent section of this county. Uh, there were good farms there, uh, river bottom land, uh, and uh, it was a, a very part, important part of the local economy. Other than just construction work, we didn't know much about the planning or any of the what the Corps did. Corps pretty much had their own way of, you know, their own agenda. And uh, so about the only thing that I recall were how important the jobs were. They were very important. Thank you.